Hey everyone, I'm Jared. And I'm Chantel. Welcome to the Port Out Podcast. Today we're talking about the winter blues. So we haven't done a reading, listening, watching in a while. So we talked about doing that. Yes. Um, because, yeah, it's probably been... Over a month? Well, well, a couple months Two probably months? since we actually last talked about right. stuff yep. we're reading. And, and it's always changing. Yeah. Well, you can do that every day probably and have a different list of things you're reading. But Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Okay. You want to kick us off with reading? Start with reading. Okay. Well, I'm going to stick with a... Okay. Well, no, I'll tell you the fiction book that I'm reading because I've been reading it for almost a week now and it's Ender's Game. Right. And I have like 50 pages left and I don't really understand what's going on. 50 pages left in the book? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> no, I mean, I do understand it. I just think that there's this twist coming and I it, it isn't coming yet and I don't know if I'm wrong. <laughs> so anyway, oh, that's like science fiction kind of classic science fiction 1977 i think yeah every book that i've read that's been like a classic science fiction i have not enjoyed this doesn't read like a classic okay. science fiction i thought it was like 90s like i thought it was newer than right because you were surprised yeah when you found out the published date yep um and then in the non-fiction world i'm reading the truth about us by brant hansen which is always a fun time to read his books. It's, um, the subtitle is something about the truth of how bad we are or something. Mm. And so far we're just in that stage where we're focusing on how terrible we are as people. I'm sure he's gonna like, you know, tie it, it in yet. But so far I'm just <laughs> feeling like, wow. You've gotta get a good base, basis of it's Pretty terrible, yep. yeah. Although I think it was something <clears throat> like 93% of people believe they drive better than the average person i was like hey i don't think so so there's one one thing <laughs> you're I got in seven percent so now i'm like a really good person because <laughs> you just think you're better than all the people that dr that think they're better at driving yeah so i think it and then i think it was like 98 percent of people think that they are morally right. better than the average person so definitely in that 98 percent yeah those stats definitely line up with reality mm -hmm. so it's good i like his like he's telling us how terrible we are, but he's interspersing it with his Brant Hansen humor. Mm -hmm. So it's much more enjoyable. He's talking about hoarding and people that have 49 cats in their living room. And he's not that bad because he only has 17 cats and it's just a little bit lighter yeah. in the midst of... It's definitely his style. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Is that his newest book or was the uh, one... The one you're reading is his newest one. Okay. That's what I... That's what I thought, but then I hadn't seen that other one before, so. I think it was released in, oh, 2020, I want to say. Okay. I could be wrong. I think it's his second newest. Hmm. I could still be wrong. Yeah. That's, that's happened before. Mostly what I'm reading. I'm always reading like Amongst five a few other more, books. Amongst a few other books, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. So fiction you started with. Um. Oh, you're also reading a science fiction book. I am reading a science fiction book that you recommended called Recorder. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not quite sure what I think about it That's yet. Fair. It's still, like, it's interesting, but I feel like there's not a whole lot going on. And mm -hmm. it just feels a little... Mm -hmm. That's fair. Uh, a little slow, but it's an interesting concept for sure. Um, the one that I just finished recently was... Uh, Tress of the Emerald Sea, oh, yeah. which mm -hmm. I can't, don't want to really talk about because you haven't read it. That's and I the want Sanderson you to read it. Secret Project, number one. Yeah, but I really enjoyed it, even though it was very, quite different than other things that I've enjoyed that he has written. Mm -hmm. But And I'm staying away from all the videos that are showing up on YouTube talking about that book, mm -hmm. so I don't know anything, except I think that everybody has loved it or enjoyed it. Like, they're all positive yeah. Even though, from what I hear, it's very different. I think I rated it like a five stars oh, wow. on Goodreads, but I think it was like a 4.5er yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. That's but, that's impressive. Yeah. So that one's that one was good. And you think um, I'll like that one? I or you don't? I'm know? not sure. Okay. Mm. I think so. Kay. But I can't explain why. 
that Fair I enough. am not sure without giving things because away. Of spoilers. So, okay. Yeah, maybe not spoilers, but yeah, well, maybe spoilers. I don't know. We uh, won't talk about it. <laughs> okay. Just in case, just to be sure. Okay. Um, yeah, so then nonfiction. Um, you also have a few books on the go. I do. So I am reading um, Brad Hansen's The Men We Need, uh, which this is like one of my favorite subtitles. It's the pur- God's purpose for the manly man, the avid indoorsman, or any man willing to show up. Yes. So that's a good one. I think the title is the subtitle is what made me curious about the book. But right, the avid indoorsman part, especially. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's been really good. I don't think I'm maybe in the target demographic of who it was written for primarily. Because um, you're I feel like it's old. more like because I'm an old mm-hmm. old man. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like it's more maybe more geared towards younger men, but there's still a lot of good good stuff in there. And then as a parent, are you like yeah storing some of that away? Yeah, I think it's yeah making me think about how you know raise raise a boy in this world that we live in and. Um, but yeah, I would recommend reading it if you're a, if you're a guy, um, even if you are old like me. I think it was it's still like I have I'm pretty much at the end um, of the what, book. What age would you think it would be the best for? Um, I would say probably like eighteen to twenty-two. Okay, that's a very narrow. Well, Target like, or, uh, yeah, well, no, I get yeah. it. That's, it. Makes sense. But cool. I feel like that kind of life stage where you're, you know, setting out on your own and like, you know, either going to university or college or whatever, or, you know, leaving the house and figuring out your <clears> life. <throat> yeah, I don't know exactly, but uh, yeah, it was it was good. And then I'm also reading slowly through. Uh, Providence by John Piper. That's a chunker of a book. It's a big one, yeah. It's it's been really good, um, but it is a slower read for me. Like it's like read a chapter and then just like I I don't think I've maybe one in one sitting I've read more than one chapter, but most of the time it's just like read one chapter and you just kind of got to let it sit and it is, sink in and stuff. Is his writing like fairly academic? More Does so like than. That? I'm used to mm-hmm. this one I think is less so than some of his other books I found it easier to read it's also shorter chapters in this book than mm-hmm. he usually has I think I mean I haven't read a ton of his books but but yeah I, I think it is more a little more on the academic side compared to what I'm used to so that yeah. just takes more mental effort to read yeah but shorter chapters so it's I don't know how many pages it, pages it is like I'd say around a thousand it's seven Okay. ish 750 something like that it looks like stormlight archive-esque but maybe the pages are thicker maybe um so then short chapters are really good when you when you're reading a big book yeah it helps it's not as overwhelming to mm-hmm. read like a 20 page chapter at a time and it's also yeah it's i feel like it's a topic that requires a lot of thought and so you don't want to just like fly through it and then not really retain it mm-hmm. and for me i need to, the time to retain it so uh, I think those are the two. I have like three other ones that I've either read the first chapter and want to read, but I'm just waiting to finish some of the other ones before, right. so I can switch mental gears. But Reader yeah. problems. Too many books. Too many books. I actually thought like this week, I was like, I think I need to make sure I don't get any new books for a while because I have actually a backlog of books, which is rare for me. You got quite a few for Christmas. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then a mm-hmm. few before that. So, that's, reader problems. That's what I said last year. Wasn't gonna buy a whole lot of books. How'd that go for yeah, you? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I have a few books. Yeah. So that's what you're reading. What that's are what you I'm reading? Listening yeah. to. Uh, so I'm currently not listening to anything other than the Bible, I guess. I'm, reading, oh, yeah. I'm listening to that every right. day. How far are you now? Uh, like quarter of the way through Deuteronomy. Oh, you're like probably way ahead of a typical one year plan by now. Yeah. Because it's still one year like plan, yeah. They, Genesis. Yeah. Cool. 
Um, I did uh, listen to uh, what's it called? Your f- your future self will thank you by Drew oh, Dick. Yes. So thanks to Kim for the recommendation. There we go. Podcast recommendation. Yeah, it was. It's a fairly short one, and I had like a bunch of hours to kill in the vehicle. What was the subtitle this week? So it's uh, oh, what is the subtitle? That tells a little bit more about what it is, I think. Oh, secrets to self-control from the Bible and brain science. So yeah, we were talking about habits last mm-hmm. week, um, and it's kind of just about yeah, forming habits and why that's important, and kind of the also some of the like psychology, I guess, factors around how your brain forms habits, and it was, so it was interesting. It was, was there a bunch of random stats in there? Probably. Um, they probably weren't made up on the spot <laughs> like mine are, but <clears throat> yeah. So I, I listened to that one in, I think like less than a week, obviously, because it was mostly in that one evening yeah. that you were in the vehicle. Yeah. It's one of those that like, I feel like it was, a, I think it was like a six hour audiobook, but I feel like the reading was so slow that I mm. two times speed it and it felt normal. Oh, interesting. So yep. I don't know. But yeah. It was, cool. a, it was a good one. Should I read that one? I think so. I think you would enjoy it because you like setting goals and and things. And you also like psychology and yes. how people think and, and that kind of thing. So I think you would enjoy it. Okay. I'll add it to my list. Uh, what are you listening to? Um, I'm listening to Stellar Loon, uh, book nine in the Keeper of the Lost Cities series, which is a middle grade fantasy series. And yeah, so book nine, I'm not going to really say anything. And then I'm also listening to Sally Clarkson's podcast because hashtag always. Actually, I'm a little behind. I didn't listen over the Christmas break. So Mm. I was listening to a few of them. She didn't take like a four week break over the Christmas break. No, (laughs) no. And then, yeah, like some people, um, her podcast always come out Monday and Tuesday which is cool, but then I always feel like I'm behind because yeah. you miss Monday and then all of a sudden you're like, you're too behind. Uh, two days in a row. Yeah, I don't know why. Interesting. But she, oh, I mean, that's what she used to do. I'm assuming that's what she still does. But now I'm like, I don't know, 10 podcasts behind or mm-hmm. something. So, but they're always encouraging, very inspiring. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, watching. Oh, it's always the hardest one that I think. is the hardest one um i came across well i was uh told about a homeschool mom youtube channel so in the last two days i've watched two of her videos so i don't remember what it is i think it's called the commonplace mom is her channel interesting i don't know um very different homeschool philosophy but interesting that's probably most of what I've watched other than some booktube videos here and there. I haven't watched a whole lot. Not surprising. It's fairly normal. Yeah. I, I honestly can't think of anything really that I've This is when you should watched. fess up what you watch while you're working. Uh, you're just get, like you're super nerdy. No, we're not doing nerdy confessions. Oh, I was just... Well, it's such a like random variety of things oh. that I mostly just listen to. I was going to say you're uh, game watching. Yeah, I don't have time to play games, so I just listen to people listen to talk people about play them. games. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Didn't want me to completely out your nerdiness there. No, I, I mean, I don't, I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> okay. It's like uh, the people that... Because, yeah, so uh, most of my watching is when i'm working on things so mm-hmm. it's it's more listening true and so like sometimes it's in the corner like on the one screen mm-hmm. while i'm working but it doesn't really get a lot of I often don't see what's going on because i'm right. just working on something or get Fair. catch catch glimpses but i i think i've talked about this before maybe not on the podcast but i feel like it's kind of like a it's almost like the radio show thing where you listen to the radio mm-hmm. um and it's uh, yeah so just i there in the background I, yeah it's just there in the background i don't for some reason i feel like it helps me to focus yeah we do not agree on this yeah but it has to be certain things because it can't be 
something that I like actually really want to pay attention to what the content of the video or the podcast, like I can't listen to a podcast while working because my, I have to like really focus on it to get what I want out of it. Unless it's a podcast that I don't really care about. But then why are you listening but then, to it? <laughs> yeah, but that's kind of what I do at, at like yeah. when I'm working is listen to stuff that I don't really, that's not super important that I catch everything. We need to go back to listening because you have been listening to a new, to you, artist. Oh, music. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah I, I, guess. I don't ever listen to music, so that's never going to be in my listening. Yeah. But I, I would say like, yeah, I haven't watched much also like watched slash listen to much YouTube stuff while working because I've been listening to music more yeah. this week. So yeah, so I started listening to, oh, now you're going to make me say the name and I don't, it's like, I don't remember what it was. Gable Price and Friends. I don't know what's Gable. Gable? Gable? Gable makes sense. Gable. I don't know. I don't know what it, how it's written. Uh, yeah, so. Anna Green Gables? Is it yes. spelled like that? Yeah. That's his friend. Gable. His Anne. friend Anne. And and who's green? Uh, none of them are green. Okay. Um, yeah, G Gable Price and Friends. Um, I think I first saw it on a recommendation on like the Gospel Coalition a couple years ago as like bands that mm -hmm. um, have good theology in some of yeah. their songs and stuff. And so I'm not sure. Like I don't think all of them are to fair like <laughs> terribly theologically deep, but. Uh, there are some really good songs that I've really enjoyed. Do you know what I want to be a thing? I want there to be a book I can buy with lyrics as poetry. Hmm. <laughs> that might exist for a specific band. Yeah, that's... That wouldn't surprise me. We would, unless, yeah, if the band's writing all their own lyrics, then... Like Andrew Peterson, I want to buy his... I want to buy a book of his lyrics. That makes sense. Like some of the, some of the songs, yeah, would have mm -hmm. really, obviously have really good lyrics. Like I'm looking at, yeah, some of the, the lyrics of these songs so that you can get an idea. I mean, you've heard me listen to them, but you don't really pay attention to the music usually that I'm listening to. No, because it's always there. I don't know. Um, yeah. And for me, like I don't listen or read poetry, mm -hmm. but music really affects me when yep. it has really, really good lyrics that really hit. Like and sometimes a different song will, or yeah. poem in well, and music I mean, form. Th that can happen to me in songs too, but I don't listen to a whole lot. So it has less opportunity to, mm -hmm. well, yeah. Gable Price and Friends, um, Dead Man is a really good one, Underdressed, um, Repentance, these are songs. <laughs> <laughs> polka Polka. Yeah. <clears throat> Big and Sheboygan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I guess I forgot about uh, music, but yeah, listening to that. Listening to um, that, not really watching yeah, anything. Not really watching a lot, and yeah, list, listening slash watching, watching some nerdy like retro video game mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Live stream their video games. Yeah. Yep. I right, see. What I most enjoy is when, because there's there's one guy that I often will watch slash listen to, and he, I like when he's um, playing with his friends as well, because mm -hmm. then they're just. The, the banter. banter back and forth is entertaining and funny and you don't really have to yeah. pay attention to it. I don't know. For, I don't know why, but for some reason, having something going while I'm working keeps me focused on what I'm working on. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I don't have that, then my mind just wants to like look up something else or like, because <laughs> then my mind yeah. is, is like thinking of what I'm working on and also like something else that's on my mind. And then I go look up that thing and then I'm distracted. But I feel like it just keeps my mind busy enough to, yeah, I don't know. Interesting. I don't know why. I, it's probably not a good thing. I think I should probably learn to focus on a single task. I think that would probably be better for my brain. Maybe. I should look up the psychology on that. Well, I think that was one thing well, that was mentioned in the 
the book that is I was it listening like multitasking? to. Multitasking. Well, yeah, how multitasking like kind of is really not good for your brain. What if your brain just does it automatically? You're supposed to not allow it. Oh, I gotta read this book. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a huge portion of the book, but I can kind of see how it could be like it's gonna be more tiring on your brain, right? Because it's it's because you can't actually multitask. Mm -hmm. You like task switch is what they call you it flip now. Back and forth really fast. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd be curious. I, mean, I should try a a week of like no music or like listening no background video, no stuff. no background stuff while working. Are you doing it this week? Report in oh. next week. <laughs> looking, Can I commit to that? Are you looking at your schedule? It's a to five see? day week. <laughs> it's a five day week. Okay, do it. Do okay, it. I gotta see. Do it the next What's week. What's my What does my schedule look like? You can do it the next week. You can do it on a four day week, so we don't kill you. No, then it's kind of just like. Okay, we're just going hard. Five days. <laughs> well, actually, that's it. So, thinking with a habit book, it was talking about how, like, when you start a habit, you shouldn't go like, "Okay, I'm going to start running today." So now I'm going to run five kilometers today. You should like start with something mm -hmm. that's easy and achievable, mm -hmm. and like, so it trains your brain to like, "Oh yeah, I succeeded," and like you. Should we try just one day? But I'm, I'm the other way. I just like, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna go all in right away. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, well, you think about it. You have to report back. You're thinking about it I'm right thinking now. about it right now because I mm -hmm. feel like if I don't commit to it now, I just won't do it. Pick a four-day week or a five-day week or just one day. Those are your three options. And, like, you're in meetings a lot of the time, so you can't really multitask then. Oh, you can work. Does yeah, that count? That's do you have to be all in to the meeting? Hmm. You need to get your work done. Yeah, is that multitask? I guess it is multitasking. But it's not like background noise. I mean, the meeting is background noise, so you just can't <laughs> yeah, go to the meeting. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> just skip the meeting. Okay, I will try Monday without any background noise while working. But it's going to, like, cause that's a habit now to, like, mm -hmm. open up some background noise immediately. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I can remember not to... Yeah. And this is going live on Tuesday, so by then you'll have already done it. Yeah, I might have lost my mind already. This may be the last moment so they will see you with your <laughs> complete mind. That's I don't have a complete mind already. <laughs> Interesting. This is a strange tangent that ended up in me somehow yep. changing how I do things. So yeah. I am curious. Like maybe I would feel less mentally tired at the end of the day. True. If just if there's less noise going on. I do like these kind of experiments. Yeah. More no, fun if there's somebody else. Yeah, I was going to say, what can we do to mess up your routines? Hey, I am, have a have a card coming. Well, I don't know when. That says, do not read for a day. So oh, okay. there will be a challenge coming one of these days. See, I'm, I'm kind of concerned that I won't get any work done because I'll just be like, I don't know, my, my brain isn't. You won't know how to function. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Interesting. We'll, we'll see. It's just one day. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe it'll go great and I'll feel super good at the end of the mm -hmm. day and then I'll just do that I'm curious forever. to see where you're at mentally Monday mm -hmm. come five o'clock. Okay. Cool. Now, moving on to the winter blues. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to get the winter blues. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe I'll avoid them. Maybe. Maybe. You're wearing blue. I should have been wearing blue. <sighs> yeah, you didn't maybe get didn't the memo. coordinate this. No. The cat hair on my shirt. Yeah, so winter blues. I mean, I don't know if everybody listening slash watching slash i don't know there's nobody reading i guess so they can no they well <clears throat> youtube sometimes captions, figures out captions. they'd probably be pretty bad probably i've never really looked um i don't know if everybody would experience what we would call the winter blues here i feel like people talk about it in places where i don't understand how they can be experiencing it hmm because I so I associate it with places that it gets cold and is very dark for a long time. But lots of people think that where they live is very dark during the winter and very cold when it's when it's different. True. When in comparison, I'm like, you guys are experiencing summer right now, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. So, like the height of winter, like the first day of winter, the shortest day of the year. I think our sun rises at nine fifteen and sets at oh i don't know it's like four, four 
40 or oh, 50 yeah, I was say like 430 like ish so yeah somewhere in there and then uh, apparently the siberian polar vortex is coming over saskatchewan here shortly so we've had a really good january but the cold temperatures are about to come are you looking at i'm up? looking at the shortest day um temperatures here in winter are often well i know that minus 40 is the same in fahrenheit and celsius and that is a fairly common january temperature for us yeah so when is what's the shortest day what do we got i don't know it says hmm. okay well 4 23 p.m 4 23 p.m is the that doesn't seem right that's a little early but it's for something anyway it's yeah so it's it's cold and dark and i i get that wherever you live if it's warmer or lighter than that it still feels different because it's relative to your normal except that our summer is way more extreme than a lot of places yes because the sun rises super early and sets super late yeah but anyway i don't know if other place i think other places experience winter blues like cabin fever like other places talking meaning southern other southern places it's not just all us cold people yeah i think yeah um i I guess i always i don't know i i I don't know what the if it's psychology or like physiology around because i feel like there is some like actual response to like lack of sunlight Mm -hmm. and and that kind of thing and so i guess i don't know that would probably be different for somewhere that's like you know southern u.s or something where it's lack of sunlight isn't really the cause it depends where you live because like some places are a lot more overcast true so they might have more hours of sunlight but the sun can't get through yeah like we just came off of three weeks of very heavy fog and frost and that never happens in january no ever well it doesn't really ever happen here so it was a lot dark normally our our winters are cold and frigid and we don't have many hours of sunlight but when the sun is there it's it's, it's very there intense yeah because it's shining off all the snow you bought me a happy light years ago already mm-hmm. five years ago maybe and i never found that it did anything and i think that's because the the sun like the that wasn't the problem for me yeah well i think also like you're from what I understand, if you have the, you're supposed to like sit with it really close to you for like a long time mm. for it to really make a difference. But yeah, I, I don't think sunlight is necessarily the the biggest issue for us around where yeah. we are. I've heard good things about the happy light. So maybe it's just people that, and we also have very big like south facing windows. So most of our house is bright all the time intentionally went with like white walls yeah to make things brighter to help with the winter um so i think that that helps and but i can understand why it might work for some people but prior to maybe the last three years Mm -hmm. you had a lot of a harder time in the winter very much struggled with it yeah so what has changed from then to now for me well, a few things actually, but I think one of the biggest ones, and it's interesting now, so I'm curious to see how the rest of the winter plays out. One of it, one of it, one of the things was, I think, fostering helped, which seems weird because fostering was like a really hard season in general, but it helped me not focus on myself so much. Mm-hmm. So, and, and like, Obviously, it was apparent before that. So I had other people to focus on. But for some reason, it was different. I guess maybe just realizing other people have it way worse. But like really realizing it, just not just thinking about it. I think that helped. So now that we're in January and we're not fostering, I'm curious to see how the next couple months go. It was also like it was just life was just busier too, right? So there was less time to dwell on things. Less time to think about myself mm-hmm. really yeah have you found yourself struggling with this over the years not 
really to the extent that that I think you did. I would, I mean, I get sick of the cold. Yeah. I'm just, just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I feel like the blues about it. It's more just like frustration or just, just tired of it. Just. Yep. That's fair. It gets cold for a long time. Yeah. And I I think that has also gotten better um, partially with us forcing ourselves to just go outside anyway yeah just go for and, a walk like getting some winter gear that helped you know that was big keep you actually warm instead of just freezing and oh my goodness thinking back to high school i would be waiting for the bus it would be minus 30 outside my hair would be wet from my shower i had to walk into my driveway and then down the road because we lived out in the middle of nowhere standing there for like 10 15 minutes in my sneakers no socks because i didn't like socks no jacket just a sweater I'm like no wonder i hated winter yeah. <laughs> makes sense uh yeah. stupid teenager so i think that has helped a lot like going for walks in the winter i actually generally enjoy yeah well we went for a walk this morning at like 7 30 in the dark and i took my gloves off at one point because my hands were too warm yeah so like we got some good stuff and that makes a difference for sure yeah yep. and walking i think we get to see fe- like feel the cold as it progresses and then feel the warmth and mm-hmm. that helps mentally usually yeah i mean there's still days where it's just like Ugh, why why do i live here <laughs> where the air hurts my face yes <laughs> yep um something else that happened three years ago in addition to fostering was i started my booktube channel and i don't know how much that has helped with the winter because it gave me something to do like a hobby to work on it gave me books to look forward to reading it gave me a community to talk to especially like during covid when you really couldn't talk to people Mm -hmm. I think that was has also been really helpful for the winter and now i actually like reading winter books during winter and feeling cold inside while it's cold outside yeah and i don't i never would have wanted that before i think we've in the last few years have tried to learn to embrace some Mm -hmm. of the things about winter and part of that is like yeah it's cold outside but then you get to enjoy like being cozy and warm inside yeah We've got like electric fireplaces, heated blankets. I finally have like a warm drink I really like. There was something else I was thinking. Slippers. So there's like things to look forward to for the cold, like when it's cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of it is, I feel, is just not dwelling on being annoyed or like... It's cold. You, you're you not going to be able to change it. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no point in just, you know, being miserable about how the fact that it's cold. Like just yeah. find things to enjoy in that season. One thing we started doing last year is often lighting candles in January at supper time because it's dark enough. It's something you can't actually do in the summer. I mean, you could do it, but it's not helpful yeah because it's so doesn't have the same look so it's like something that feels special to that time of year because yeah it it, it's like a bright spot yeah yeah like generally it's not it hasn't been hard it doesn't get hard until after christmas Mm -hmm. right because usually the beginning of winter you're looking forward to all the things Mm -hmm. like because there's yeah there's Christmas to look forward to which is always just a fun season with kids and then historically like after that you get into January and it's just like there it's hard to know what to look forward to in January yes. because there you know there's no real holidays after the first and we have nothing here until like middle of February yeah. for a day extra day off or anything yeah. but then the more that you can add those winter specific Mm -hmm. activities that feel like kind of special or unique to the season i think it helps one thing i've started doing i think i started 
November or December is writing a list of activities to do together or myself or something with the kids for each month of the year. So that something that we can like, a way that we can embrace the month that it is. Mm -hmm. And I haven't done it for the entire year yet, but I think it's helpful. Yeah. Yeah, like e even with, in, you know, forcing ourselves to go outside in the winter, the reality is that we both like to be inside. Yeah. Like I enjoy a book that's subtitled about the avid indoorsman. Yeah. I, I like being inside. Yeah, I can really And I, I do feel like winter kind of gives you an excuse to be inside a lot more because when it's, you know, 22 degrees outside Celsius, whatever that is, 70 something. 73 or 4. When it's the ideal outside temperature. Yeah you feel kind of bad Being sitting inside, inside all the yeah. time. But when it's really cold, yeah. then you can feel okay about yeah. just like going inside and being cozy. And yes. so yeah. for, for indoor people, it's not all bad, I guess. No, but I do feel like, yeah, taking that to the extreme sometimes when it's just like, for sure. Oh, it's cold. So I'm not going to go outside at all. Mm -hmm. And then I, I do for feel like that months. does really, have a bit of a strain on the mental health or can i think so it's funny you can't just like say this one thing is what's helpful but definitely the last few years have been better yeah well, it's always a combination of things yeah like because there's so many like there's so many factors and like I, I mean i don't know like i said i don't know if there's you know science behind what happens in the brain in winter if people you know mm -hmm. but there's always even if there is there's always like physical factors of you know what you're actually doing and then there's you know spiritual emotional factors because you know you can just dwell on yeah. being oh this isn't the temperature i want and i'm just going to be sad about it and everything's awful and my life is terrible and yeah like you can get yourself in a cycle pretty easily mm -hmm. yeah for sure um i, th I had one other thing one other thing written down that um, is something that helps, has helped, I think, is having something to learn. So this could be like reading books on a certain topic. This winter, I promised that I was going to try to give one last effort to learning to crochet. I still haven't pulled it out. I do blame the cat <laughs> because I am scared to pull it out and then he's going to attack all the yarn and that's just going to be frustrating. But I feel like in the last few years, I have taken more time to like learn things or embrace like some kind of hobby that I kind of only do in the winter. Puzzles. Puzzles. Yeah. Cat destroyed that too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what made me think of it. Totally halfway through it. And he just, you know, so starting a new puzzle. I have a winter puzzle actually that I'm excited to start, but I just don't know how to keep it away from him right now. Is it all white? No. That would be mean. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> we may have gifted a very hard puzzle. <laughs> snowy owl in a snowy background. Yeah. It's a nice looking puzzle. And he did get it done. Yeah. So. And I don't think he harbors too much bitterness towards <laughs> <Why> us. Not? <laughs> I wouldn't have. I would a not have been able pieces. to finish that. Oh, we were mean. We should have got him a 500 one for something that difficult. <laughs> Yeah. But it took him longer than his normal puzzles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it's like a combination of different things beating the winter blues. And I think it, it's a lot of like just mentally not allowing yourself to be yeah. down. Because, yeah, there are terrible things about this season, but there's also some good things. And if yeah. you could just like look for those and pull those out and focus on the things you would rather do in the winter or can only do in the winter yeah i think i think a lot of it is like yeah there's moments when it feels like oh this is i just i don't like this because i don't like the cold it's but then if you dwell on that then it just starts to really snowball oh good know. one <laughs> good one <laughs> unintended pun that was intended no mm. it wasn't at first and then i considered not saying it because it's i don't know oh. not a big pun person <laughs> you're so funny Anyway, uh, it can snowball and just become like 
self-perpetuating yep. almost where it's like oh i'm always so sad in the winter because i'm always so sad yes. in the winter because do you know this actually made me think so one of my uh, problems prior to the last couple of years was in the winter i would look up vacations and going away mm. and then with fostering and covid that wasn't even an option and so i wasn't thinking about the greener pastures somewhere else i was dreaming about how things would be better so much better if you were just somewhere else mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah and it's like well i'm here so like how can i make this yeah. the best that it can be yeah and i mean there are things to enjoy yeah if you choose to look for them right we've had some beautiful frost yeah trees were just coated yeah like I feel like some of the scenery in where we are like is best viewed in winter. Yep. Winter's the great equalizer <laughs> for yards. Uh, oh yeah, was, our walking path has a lot of well, pee and yes, yeah, dog stuff everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's a little and less then another enjoyable. Little, another little bit of snow to cover it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's all I had to say about winter blues. Getting over them. Yeah, I, I think I always, I, I look forward to spring a lot mm -hmm. and I, I really enjoy spring because of how cold winter is. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if we didn't live somewhere where it got so cold and it wasn't covered in snow, like it wouldn't be such a, it wouldn't be so enjoyable to see yeah. things melting and hear birds, yes. you know, and Coming like, back and... yeah. So it's, I think the fact that we have really extreme seasons in some ways helps us to enjoy the different aspects of them more yeah because there is more differences to enjoy yeah mm -hmm. and there's just something exciting about like spring coming yes like i love seeing like the first geese come back yeah that's always an exciting day for me yeah mm -hmm. you, I mean, even when you can hear the water dripping on the on the street like oh, draining yeah. into the storm drain or like yeah dripping off your roof or whatever because the snow is melting it's just like i don't know there's something about those those sights and sounds that are exciting yep like makes you look forward to new growth new starts and and stuff so so yeah i mean we've made it it's like more than halfway through january yeah which to me is like already pretty close <laughs> oh yes you want to bring up this is the winter is the one time when i'm the pessimist in this relationship <laughs> because he like what when when is your highlight like you're like oh we're through january we're good to go no like because i know that january and february are okay cold and oh, so i feel like march to me is the month yeah. that thing and i i realize that march is still mostly all snow and but i feel like march is when things you can feel things start to take a bit of a change. Yeah, that is true. I always just feel like, but then I'm mentally in this like March is spring, but here March is still winter, like in so yeah. many ways, like we still get snow and it's yeah, it's like, yeah it cold. melts a bit, but then it comes back and yeah. And so I don't know. I don't really, I don't really trust spring until like the middle of May. <laughs> no, like it, like I don't expect it to, Oh, it's going to all melt now and now it'll just yeah. be nice. Yeah. But I, just the process of it starting to melt is is what I look forward to. Yeah, that's fair. Because mm -hmm. I think I enjoy spring and fall more than summer. Yeah. And so, and spring, probably even spring the most just because it's like it's the farthest away from winter i guess no that used to historically that is was my case yeah but you do like everything is new mm -hmm. and like we live in a place that's often very dry and mm -hmm. so in spring it's not yeah you get so to see everything turn green things are growing and until the drought and then it all turns brown <laughs> yeah 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 but I, I yeah i think just looking forward to that helps remind myself that like yeah it's cold but that's not forever like you know like yeah. so far in my life spring has always come yeah it's never stayed minus 20 all the way through the year no no and narnia yet no not always winter and never christmas relying k is that a, yeah i guess it would be but isn't that a quote from the book i don't know 
but now I have that song in my head, so. It's a good song. Yeah. Pretty sure it's a quote from the book. Yeah, well, I think Mr. Tumnus says something about that, actually. Or maybe not a direct quote, but a... Yeah. Yeah. Now we're just cool. waiting for spring. Yeah, we are. And it's like oh, just around the corner. Just around the just corner. Around the corner. Yeah. I'll try to have your yeah. optimistic attitude. <laughs> the corner is like a few blocks away, but it's, it's around the corner. <laughs> it's maybe around a few corners. <laughs> a few no. polar vortexes coming here first. Right. Siberian polar vortex is not not really what you want to hear. Not a phrase hear. you want to hear coming. No. No, no, but we have been, like this January has been way warmer mm-hmm. than I remember a January being. Yeah. The last week is usually very cold, so we're not out of the woods yet. No, but, for but sure. But it started out. Like where we live, I feel like any time in January and February that you get a week that is warmer than minus 10 it's like i don't know to you, celebrate yeah just, yep like because it, it's just not normally like that in january and february so so yeah it's winter but spring is coming i think that's it from us for today that's it, that's any all. questions for anybody you want to i'm curious if people have the same kind of feeling of the winter blues even yes. if they Maybe live in further south and what we think is yeah much warmer. I feel places. like we make it sound like we live in like Siberia, yeah, the North Pole or yeah. something. Feels like it sometimes. It but. does. Right. Cool. Well, if you got any tips and trip tricks, tips trips. and trips, yeah. tips and tricks, mm-hmm. uh, leave them know. in the comments. And other than that, we'll see you. No, we won't see you. I always say we'll see you next week. Yeah, that's see not true. Us. We'll see nothing. (laughs) Hopefully something. (laughs) Okay. Have a good week.